This qualifying recap brought to you by Philips Connect, technology that moves us forward. All right, we're joined in the media center by funny car number one qualifier, Matt Hagen, who stayed on top and with his run for Friday, 3.878, 332 miles an hour. Second straight number one qualifier, third this season, 46 in your career. Uh, obviously, you guys, I'm sure, are feeling good heading into Sunday. Yeah, I feel real good. I mean, obviously, that last run, I, I feel like that was on the driver for sure. Uh, I got it. I let it get outside and uh, it, it rattled the tires and got a little bit more and then just come loose. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of one of the things when you're like, damn, I'm in the marbles, you know what I mean? You just know as a driver, it's like, ah. But they were pushing hard and, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, obviously there was anything that Dickie or anybody else did other than me, but uh, I feel really confident going into tomorrow. Um, you know, there's going to be some heavy hitters in funny car no matter what. Um, you know, there's no easy draws or anything like that. And it's nice if we can get past first round to get a buy into the semis, which, you know, uh, I guess being number one qualifier, you get a little reward for doing that. But uh, all in all, it's just, you know, I, I love going through some of these hard cars and, you know, uh, we've just had an amazing season, and this power broker Dodge is just running so strong, man. I mean, you know, Tony gives us all the parts and pieces that we need to, to do whatever we need to do with, and, uh, you know, just kind of, you know, there's nothing that we haven't asked for that we hadn't got. So, uh, you know, I'm sure you expect results, and we're trying to give that to him. All right, we're joined in the media center by Top Fuel number one qualifier, Steve Torrance. Uh, your runner of 366 for Friday keeps you in the top spot. Second number one qualifier this season, 33rd in your career. Obviously a great run last night, but to close out today uh, with another great one to, to go into to eliminations probably has you feeling good, I'm sure, right? Yeah, I didn't realize that was our second one. I thought it was our first, but um, it, it's, it does feel good to know that the car went out there, and I think we were low first session, low the third session, and second or, th or third low for the second session, and one of the few cars to still go down that left lane. So uh, definitely steps in the right direction and and that's what we've been working at all year is just trying to get it a little bit better and a little bit better and and you know when the consistency card starts coming around it, it's great so i'm uh, very happy with that result i know you're focused on your run and your car what you guys are doing but when you make three great side-by-side -side runs with, with Brittany, all three runs there um i mean is that kind of a thrill for you i mean is that like a cool moment when you guys are, are putting on a show like that yeah, I mean, that's what these fans come here for. These guys, uh, guys and girls and kids and everybody comes here to watch great side-by-side -side racing. And so when you can have the number one and number two car from the last three or four years, five years, come in and, and, and put on a show like that for everybody here. And, uh, and, and just, that's what it's about. I mean, we're in the entertainment industry and we're trying to put on a great show for all these fans. All right, we're joined in the media center by Pro Stock number one qualifier, Dallas Glenn. His run of uh, 6.543, 209 miles an hour held up from yesterday. First number one qualifier of the season, second in your career. Obviously, you've had a lot of success with victories and stuff like that, but how cool is it to, to get a number one qualifier in your first race back in a month? Uh, going number one is kind of cool. As, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was talking after my first number one last year, I was talking with Matt Hartford, and he goes, you know, all the years I've ever been racing, he goes, I've never been number one before. And that was kind of, you know, these guys have been racing for a very long time. And, yeah. and this is just my second year and here I got a second one. And, and it was uh, it was kind of an interesting one too. Was really packed in there really tight. Um, kind of, you know, I, I feel like I definitely made my best run when I needed it. And, and, you know, the air was a little worse today and we kind of missed it on both of my runs and just kind of overcompensated for it. but. Um, I think we'll be good for tomorrow, though, so it, uh, I, I, think, I think we got something wrong. About 366 at 329 miles an hour. You can't get down the left lane, huh? What you guys do? Forget to tell Hogan that? Oh, what a heck of a shot there. Steve, you set a track record. This place has always been very good to you guys and, and your family, but to, to come out there and, and deliver a run like that, how, how satisfying, how cool is that to close out the day? Uh, super satisfying, extra, extra special for us. We've been working really hard at trying to get the car to run quicker, to run more mile, mile per hour. And, and we, haven't, we, we haven't really pinned it down just yet. So uh, to go out, to come here and, and go out in Q1, and be the only car that went down that lane and then set low ET and, and run the way that we did 
Um, that's a feel good thing. That's something that we really needed to, to kind of just give ourselves a little boost in the arm. We haven't, uh, we hadn't won a race yet and everybody's making a big deal about that, but we're still second in the points and the cars run re reasonably well, but just not where we have in the past. And so we, we, we've, we've found some things that we think are better and we're working on them and we'll just see if they have the consistency that we, we are used to and what we want to have. But I think that uh, that was a huge boost of, of confidence for all of the Capco boys and, and myself. exciting to drive all the time and you know having Dickie Venables under the hood there is a uh, is a godsend and you know it's one of those things where you just know these are Dickie's conditions I mean but like when we won and I guess it was uh when we went Houston it was hot or something like that yeah we won Houston it was hot too and uh so the guy's just a mastermind man and I'm just trying to do a good job driving it it was it was shaking so hard in there it moved the car all the way over and then I was like I don't know if it's gonna go and it, it cleared up and then down there it uh it put a hole out at the finish line and i was trying to keep it off the wall and it just uh it's just a lot of fun to drive you know i mean but uh, to go out there and run that when you see guys out here shaking the tires and smoking and not making full pulls um just because the track is so good you know what i mean like it, i think a lot of crew chiefs come up here and they they kind of like you know underestimated a little bit and uh you know so one thing about Dickie Venerables, Mike Knutson, and Alex Conway, they don't underestimate anything. You know, it's kind of like, you know, they go for the juggler vein and, and, and they seem to hit a lot. You know, and I'm, like I said, I'm just having a great time driving this race car. Lining up on the starting line here, taking aim at Cameron Caruso, who sits on top. Four, three, Dallas Glenn to the top. Uh, we were pretty happy. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm sure they probably feel crew chiefs. You know, they, I'm sure they feel like there's more left in it. But um, to come out and, and put a nice solid lap down and to be the, the best of the group definitely um, shows that we, we were working hard and, and uh, kind of stayed in the groove and we didn't you know have too much rest to shake off. And everything felt real good in the car and everything. The, the run run felt nice and smooth and everything felt natural. And so I was glad I, I didn't uh, make any mistakes on my part. Um, but you talked about you know, being away. How excited were you guys to, to, to get back to, to racing and just get back in action this weekend? Uh, we were so excited to get back to racing that we actually showed up early to the race. <laughs> Normally we're, we're one of the last ones to roll through the game. We usually roll through on Thursday. We actually got here Wednesday afternoon. We were so ready to get back to racing. You know, it, uh, it, it, in the flip, it's, sometimes it's good to get a little bit of time off. You get to fix some things that you may not have had time to kind of do right before. You, know, you kind of had some band-aid stuff in the trailer and stuff like that. We were fixed and got some new things on the trailer and everything. But as far as the race cars goes, it was definitely, we were ready to come back. Competition Plus is your go-to source for the latest in drag racing news. For over 20 years, CompetitionPlus.com has provided news you can trust, thoroughly researched and delivered as quick and fast as it can be uploaded. Whether it's nitro or stock, drag radial or pro modified, our riders are trained to bring you the inside story time and time again. We have it all from in-depth news articles to the latest in high-performance products to the scuttlebutt making its way around the pits. Original video content from the stars in drag racing also makes Competition CompetitionPlus.com, the ultimate one-stop shop for die-hard drag racing fans. Don't make CompetitionPlus.com your only stop on the information superhighway. Make it your first. For news you can trust and have trusted for 20 years, visit CompetitionPlus.com. Be sure to download our mobile app. It's a free download on the Apple Store and Google Play.